Hi and welcome to the awareness training video for cybersecurity. The training will cover the following topics: 1. Threats overview, 2. Password safety, 3. Internet protection, 4. Email protection, 5. Preventive measures. Without further ado, let's get started. What is a cybersecurity? Referred to as information technology security, focuses on protecting computers, networks, programs, and data from unintended or unauthorized access, change, or destruction. As a company, we are engaged with a bunch of documents that are very crucial in the operations and other processes in a daily basis therefore, there's no room for an error. Why cybersecurity training is important. In order to reduce the security risk due to human error, it is important of having everyone at the company go through cybersecurity training, to be able to help prevent attacks and breaches at the company. People will have more knowledge and understanding of how these attacks work, the types of things they should be looking for and wary of, and they will know how to respond accordingly. According to the statistics, 25% of the root cause of data breaches is due to human error, and 48% caused by malicious threat. Malicious threat is categorized into three types. 1. Malware. 2. Hacking. 3. Social engineering. Malware has the biggest contribution for the data breaches among the threats. Let's dive into, Threats Overview, which covers the below subtopics. Malware, Phishing, and, Social Engineering. Let's talk more on malware. Malware has numerous families with many names, 1. Viruses, 2. Worms, 3. Trojan, 4. Ransomware, 5. Rootkits, 6. Bootkits. What is malware? Malware is any software intentionally designed to cause damage to a computer, server, client, or computer network. A wide variety of types of malware exist, including computer viruses, worms, Trojan horses, ransomware, spyware, adware, rogue software, and scareware. Programs are also considered malware if they secretly act against the interests of the computer user. Is malware on Windows only? Malware definitely exists on other operating systems outside of Windows. Windows is typically the major target due to high market share. When new malware is released on other operating systems, it typically has a high penetration rate due to people believing their Android, Mac, and Linux devices are safe without having any endpoint security installed. Is malware on mobile phones? Mobile phone malware is a growing threat due to users doing the majority of their internet browsing on a cell phone. Ransomware, or screen locking malware, is a popular threat on mobile devices. In 2016, malware targeting Apple iOS, iPhones, iPads, had dramatically increased as it didn't allow vendors to create antivirus for these products, so users must depend on the company to fix any vulnerabilities. How does my computer get infected? by clicking malicious links, in your email. Also, it can penetrate, by plugging in an unknown flash drive straight away, to your computer without scanning them, and, by downloading malware mimicking as other legit software. How does my mobile device get infected? You will get it, by doing similar actions. Clicking malicious links in email. Downloading malware masquerading as other software. Installing third-party apps directly from the Internet instead, via official stores such as Google Play or Apple's App Store. Here are the top tips to avoid device getting the malware infection. First, install endpoint security on all devices. Second, be careful what you plug in, such as USB, flash drive, external drive or similar. Third, be careful what you click. And lastly, get awareness training. The second type of malicious is phishing. What is phishing? Phishing is the act of setting the bait, trap, and, casting it out into a wide ocean. Hoping that something bites that you can hook then. By definition, it is a fraudulent practice of sending emails purporting to be from reputable companies in order to induce individuals to reveal personal information such as passwords and credit card numbers. Phishing practice is intentionally deceiving someone by posing as a legitimate company. Typically, it utilizes email by, pretending to be a company, or service, requesting you to do something for their personal gain, until, 
things are getting done according to their plan. Here is the phishing example. Email received, pretending from DHL company, and requesting to click the link that will redirect you to fake websites to steal sensitive information from your company. Another phishing example. Email received requesting for payment with an attachment. Never ever click or download the attachment as it is made to steal sensitive information from your laptop slash desktop. More phishing examples. Another phishing example. This time asking for payment from an unknown email address and prompting you to do so in an urgent manner. Here is the phishing example. Email received from someone asking to update your personal information in the PayPal account. It is obvious, that the sender email is not from the legitimate PayPal company. If it happens, report immediately to your IT company or navigate to your email settings to block the sender or mark as phishing to avoid receiving further from that account. The fake PayPal looks very legit, as it entices you with their promising words for you to fill the form in an urgent manner. Another phishing example. Observe the following red flags. Invalid email address. Malicious attachment, incorrect spelling, poor grammar, and invalid signature. More phishing examples. Observe the following points. Scammer wants you to act quickly before you have time to think clearly. Here are the simple steps to block the phishing email from your Outlook account. First, select the phishing email from your inbox and navigate to the delete icon located above the right side of your window. Click junk and select block sender. Report it to the IT team for further action to be taken. Tips to avoid a victim of phishing activities. Look carefully, and, check who the email sender is. Check further the email for grammar and spelling mistakes. Mouse over the link to see where it goes. And do not click the link, manually type it in. Social Engineering What is social engineering? It is a manipulation of people into divulging confidential or sensitive information. Most commonly, done over email, but also regularly carried out over the phone. It can be a slow gain of information. It can attempt to gain all information needed at once. Phone call targets employees at a business. The caller asks who the boss CEO is. Requests his slash her email address. Now, the attacker has the username and the name of the person targeted for compromise. Social engineering example. A person walks into the office, pretending, to be a contractor. Due, to his slash her uniform, people assume it's okay. The person walks into the room with sensitive info and steals it. Top tips to avoid social engineering are the following. Be careful with the information you disclose. Verify the credentials of contractors. If you have any doubts about the identity of callers, hang up and call their official company number back. Let's move on to topic number two which is password safety. Security questions. Typically, users are honest when filling out security questions. Malicious, parties can utilize social media to find out the answers to these questions, which allows them to reset your password. The best practice is to not be honest when filling out these questions. Treat security questions as another password field. Users and poor password hygiene. Typically, users practice risky behavior with respect to passwords. Passwords, nowadays, can be a gateway to identity theft. Another poor password hygiene practice is a document or sticky note with passwords written on it is placed somewhere people can see it easily. Freely sharing the password with friends, family members, colleagues is one of the poor password hygiene. The password with all letters is poor password hygiene. More poor hygiene password. Data breaches lead to password problems because, passwords sometimes are extracted. Very simple to try all alternative options of password base. Tips to create strong password. Make your password long. Make your password a nonsense phrase. Include numbers, symbols, uppercase. Top tips for password safety. Utilize unique passwords across all websites slash applications. Enable and utilize TUFA on all websites that allow it. Choose unique, non-true security questions. Change your password more often. 
Topic number 3 Internet Protection These are the subtopics under Internet Protection. Search Engine Safety Web Content Filter HTTPS Public Wi-Fi Internet of Things Search Engine Search Engine Safety Nowadays, users utilize search engines to ask every question they can think of. Users click on search results without first checking if it is a legitimate site. This happens commonly on social media websites as well. Even if the website is reputable, the advertisement being displayed could be malicious and infect your computer or mobile device. Free things, music, movies, game cheats, etc., are very commonly filled with malware and are rarely what they say they are. Top tips for search engines Stick to clicking on sites on the first page of the results. Be careful when clicking on non-name recognizable sites. Malware commonly masquerades as free things. Web Content Filter Web Content Filter Filters web traffic based on pre-configured policies set by the administrator. There are both home versions and corporate versions. Home versions focus on child safety, while corporate versions focus on employee productivity. Not only can it restrict the content that is displayed to a certain audience, but it can also be utilized to filter malicious content and protect the user. Top tips for a web content filter. Increase employee productivity by implementing a web filter. Curb risky user behavior and reduce malware exposure by implementing a web filter. Protect children's mobile devices and computers from displaying inappropriate content with a web filter. HTTPS What is HTTPS? It is a protocol for secure communication over a computer network which is widely used on the Internet. HTTPS is typically notated by displaying a green lock in the web address bar. No sensitive information should be typed into a page that is not secured by HTTPS. Even though a page is secured with HTTPS, it does not automatically mean the page is safe. Most browsers have begun to let users know more easily when they are on a non-secure page. Top Tips for Secure Websites HTTPS Before entering sensitive information, check to see if the site is secured by HTTPS. Check to make sure this is a reputable website before entering credit card information. Don't just depend on the HTTPS indicator. What is public Wi-Fi? It is a non-secure network that users can connect to for free. Typically found in hotels, coffee shops, libraries, and many other places. Do not assume that a network named library is actually the wireless network for the public library. Verify with the business owner the name of their network. It is very insecure, so you should treat every public Wi-Fi connection as compromised, unsafe. This means you should not utilize any sensitive websites when connected, banking, social networking, etc. If you need to access one of these sites, utilize your cell phone, and do not connect it to Wi-Fi, just use the cell service. Top Tips for Public Wi-Fi Verify the Wi-Fi name with the business owner prior to connecting. Treat public Wi-Fi connections as compromised, unsafe. Utilize an anti-malware product to help prevent cyber attacks while connected. Our fourth topic is email protection. Topics under email protection are the following. Password reset, spam protection and attachment. Password reset. When passwords are forgotten, the ability to reset your password is very convenient, but if not utilized properly this can allow someone to easily take over your account. Some websites do not require any security questions to be answered or any additional information besides the account email address to initiate a password reset. Usually, when someone requests a password reset, an email is sent to the email address on file with this information. Monitor these emails and contact the vendor directly if you see these and did not initiate them yourself. But remember the spam slash phishing rules from earlier. Top tips for password reset. Utilize strong unique passwords. Utilize strong, not correct, security questions. 
Monitor attempted password resets on your accounts for fraudulent activity. Spam protection Everyone gets spam, even with the best protection, some still slips through the cracks. Some email providers have better spam protection than others. A third-party anti-spam product can supplement the protection provided by the email provider. Never open spam emails, even if you think it is funny to see the content inside. Never respond to spam emails. Be careful using your email address to sign up for contests or enter websites. When posting your email to a public website, always add special breaks in your email address. Example, Ben at Heset.com. Top tips for spam protection, utilize a different provider or third-party product if necessary. Never, click, open, or respond to spam messages. When posting an email to classified sites, use the following format to keep spam bots from retrieving and using your address, John Smith at email.com Attachment Policy Attachments are one of the most common ways to get viruses or malware. Even though an attachment might look like a document or Excel file, it might contain a virus or malware. Attachment Policy Do not click or open attachment from unknown email addresses or senders. Be wary of unsolicited attachments, even from people you know. If you see something that is questionable, send it to your IT department for verification. These are the following top tips for preventive measures. Utilize an AV product on all devices, not just Windows computers. Know your attachment policy coupled with a spam filter. Implement a web content filter to help with malicious content, inappropriate content, and productivity issues. Utilize unique passwords, and, maintain a clear password policy. If needed, use a password manager, keep all internet connected devices up to date, including routers, internet of things devices, computers, mobile devices. Preventive measures These are the following top tips for preventive measures, utilize an AV product on all devices, not just Windows computers, know your attachment policy coupled with a spam filter. Implement a web content filter to help with malicious content, inappropriate content, and productivity issues. Utilize unique passwords, and, maintain a clear password policy. If needed, use a password manager. Keep all internet-connected devices up to date, including routers, Internet of Things devices, computers, mobile devices. Thank you and stay safe.